James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. We mentioned this last week. Therefore, submit to God. Say submit. Yeah. Submit to God. Submit to God. What does he say next? Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So the first thing we have to do is we have to submit to God. If we really want a true encounter in our life to take place, we got to submit to God. And you go, Pastor, come on, man. Why don't you just shout a little bit, make me feel good? Why don't you yell a little bit in that microphone? Because when you start yelling, everybody gets a little excited and it makes tingles go up and down. No, 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 no. That, that's all good. That, that's getting the present. You'll feel a little bit with all of that stuff. But when you submit to God and you begin to resist the devil through submission to a holy God, that devil's going to flee from you. And, and I'm, ex I'm excited to uh, announce to you today verse 8. Because after you submit to God and you begin to resist the devil and he flees from you, verse 8 pulls us in and it says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Who drew near first? You did. Sometimes we're like, well, if God wants to use me, God's just going to have to come down and tell me. Where do you see that in the Bible? You selfish person, you. God bless you. I guess you're so important that God's going to just take all of his time away and come down to you and speak to you and you alone and come and drag you out of something. Now, here, if you really want an encounter with God, if you really want to draw close to God or God to draw close to you, you've got to start getting close to him. And I think getting close to God goes a little bit further than having a Sunday morning relationship with him. Having some visitation rights. Hey, God, you got visitation rights in my life. You see me four times a week. Or, or you see me four times a month. I'm sorry. Four times a week be pretty good. Come on, somebody. Let's clap on that one. You know what I'm saying? But he says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. But I love this. It says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. He goes on. Draw, draw near to God. He'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. There's, there's this... Uh, there's this obedience that has to take place in order for us to really get into the presence of God and encounter Him in ways that we want to encounter Him. Now, this is where I'm going to take about 10 minutes and talk about something, and you're probably not going to hear any scriptures quoted, but we're going to come off of what we just told about or said in James chapter 4. You ready? Here's what you got to understand. you got to understand that encountering God is much deeper than a tangible feeling or an emotion. Sometimes we leave church service. Boy, I felt God today. Well, what are you feeling at lunch? What are you feeling in the afternoon? Because an encounter with God and, and this depth that I'm going to try to get you to push yourself into spiritually over the next month, two months or so, this depth, it, it comes when we go farther than just a tangible feeling or an emotion. Well, I cried during worship today. Well, how are you crying on Monday? Because Monday you're crying in a totally different way. Monday you're weeping because your marriage is falling apart and you don't know what to do. And not one time during the weeping moment are you crying out to God. Because you feel like that those moments only come in a setting like this. That's wrong. See, to encounter God, when, when you begin to encounter God, it, it's to be welcomed into His all-consuming presence. So His presence begins to get on the inside of you. And not only His all-consuming presence, but His glory. And when you begin to encounter God, it, it's, it's, it's the beginning of discovering who you were made to be. Then those things begin to come to fruition and, and, and not only who you were made to be, it causes you uh, to see how he has always seen you as. Now, now you're beginning to get a revelation of who you really are with God. See, there's a difference between the presence of God and the glory of God. That's what I'm trying to get to you today. And if you only, are y'all with me? Y'all gonna love me after this? Okay, if you only visit his presence for what he can do for you. Mm, I wish I had a, I need one of those microphones today. Right? If you only visit his presence for what he can do for you rather than who he is in his glory, you don't have the gospel. You have a hobby. I'm going fishing today. I'm going to grab my tackle box. I'm going to go fishing. After I get done fishing, what do I do? 
I put the rod and reel back in the garage and I put my tackle box in the garage. If you're coming to the presence of God just to see what He can do for you, you've got a hobby. You're going to the pond to fish and when you get done fishing, you go back out and you put all of that on the counter and you leave it for the week until it's time to fish again. God wants us to have more than a hobby. Hello. Everything that we do is more than a hobby. His presence is tangible, but His glory brings manifested power in our lives. If we truly want revival to hit our land, we've got to seek the glory of God, not just the tangible presence. If we want revival to hit our family and our city and our school districts and all of that, we can't just come to church so that we feel good. We've got to take the church to the world so that the world can feel good. <laughs> he doesn't want us to just experience and feel his presence in a specific situation. Oh, I'm down and out. I hope God shows up. Girl, God showed up the last time. Why won't God show up this time? He don't want you to just think about his presence. He wants you to think about his power. He wants us to experience the power of who he really is. That's how you can say that you felt God in the service, but when you left the service, you were never changed. Oh, I got, I got what I needed today. Woo, got what I needed today. Monday afternoon, you cussing, rampant, raging, have no clue. You're bitter and depressed and broken and, and all kinds of stuff. Hell's breaking loose in your life. How? Because you came and you felt God, but you didn't allow God. Oh, I'm going I'm I'm to break this one out too, right? If you can leave his presence unchanged, if you literally leave his presence unchanged, you are not a tabernacle of his glory. You are a slave to entertainment. That's what you are. You're a slave to entertainment. Entertain me. Come on, guitar. Entertain me. Do something to me. Boy, that boy on the drums today, he just didn't do it. I, I don't know. I didn't feel it in worship the way that I usually feel it. You know what? The preacher, you know, he usually gets up there and shouts and spits. You can see spit coming out of his mouth. I'm serious. There, there's literally, it's wet. They have, do you know in between services, they got to bring mops for the pastor's spit up on stage? I tell you what, I, you know, I just didn't feel it though. He just wasn't as fine up as he was last week and I just don't know you know what you are a slave to entertainment entertain me pastor come on <laughs> and what you're doing is you've got a God that you can encounter that can deliver you heal you set you free do whatever you want to do in your life that's the kind of God that you serve but you pick him up and you put him down hello you become interested in him, in, in, in him in moments that you feel like you should be interested in him and then uninterested in other moments. How? Why? Because that, that's your convenience. Everything's at your own convenience. Well, I, I feel like I need to go to church today. I'll tell you right now, I didn't want to come to church today. And that's the honest to God truth. This is not some play on words as a preacher is preaching. I didn't want to come to church today. But you know what? God's called me, and it doesn't matter how I feel. What matters is if I get up and show up. Come on. And everybody don't want to get up, and they don't want to show up, but they want Jesus to just reign in their life. It don't happen that way. Come on. We got to get in the presence and the glory of God so that our lives can be forever changed. And I'm going to tell you, you, you get around the things of God, but never changed by the glory of God. You're only seeing what God can do. You are not experiencing it. There's a difference in seeing what God can do and experiencing what God can do. Come on. I, 
don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing what God can do. I'm ready to experience what my God can do. I'm tired of seeing a revival happen somewhere else. I'm ready to experience revival in my life. I'm tired of seeing marriages and addict, uh, uh, people who are addicted and all of these things happen in other places. I'm ready for my marriage to be set free. I'm ready for the addictions that I have in my life to break loose off of my life. Where's the church at today? This, what I'm talking about, church, is it's, it's, I wanted to lay a foundation for this, for this month because it's how we get stuck in a cycle. Can I speak to you very candidly and raw today? I can't point anybody out. I can't. But I could promise you that there are people in this room today, people watching online right now, you are in a cycle. You're in a cycle, a spiritual cycle. Let me, let me call it a religious cycle. And here's what you're doing. You're waiting on certain events or church services for God to breathe life on the inside of you. Just in a cycle. How many of you, I'll, I'll confess, because I love getting into the presence of God in the midst of, of believers, okay? I love this. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, don't forsake the assembling of the brethren, okay? Uh, that's why it just gets on my nerves, some of these people that's got church hurt, which is, church hurt is really big, right? So you, you could get church hurt. I get all of that. But when you get church hurt and you don't go back to church, you were following man, not God. It said that Jesus went to the synagogue weekly, as was his custom. And if it was Jesus' custom to show up at church every week, Jesus was showing up at church when those, those people killed him. I don't know if you remember that. But those people he were attending church with literally ended up crucifying him. He did not care. It was his custom to show up to the synagogue, and he showed up to the synagogue. Come on, somebody. We don't want to do that anymore. Why? Because we're in a religious cycle. We want God to do what God can do in our terms. You know why? Because we become addicted to temporary trips into his presence instead of actually having a hunger and a thirst to live in his glory. <laughs> I got an addiction. What's your addiction? I got to get to church. Oh, I got to get to church. Why? Because I got to get a hit. I got to get a hit. Girl, I've had a hit in the shower. I've got a hit going down the interstate 40. I was talking to a lady one day, I don't know if she's here, Jennifer Buchanan, I'm not really for sure, she oversees our prayer ministry, but, but she, she said something to me, one day she said, I can't explain it, but I was going down Interstate 40, and I got a hit. In other words, Jesus hit her going down Interstate 40. She said, I don't even know how long I went before I opened my eyes back up. And when I got done, I think she said that she was pulled off on the side of the road. She had no clue. You don't have to come to church to get a hit. But just because you don't have to come to church to get a hit doesn't mean you exclude church. Oh, he's preaching in the house today. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. This is why it says this. Listen to this. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know what I think the problem is? People are not hungry anymore, and they're not thirsty. They're not hungry and they're not thirsting for righteousness. I love what John said in worship today. My gosh, how he led communion today was beautiful. It was amazing. But here's what John said. He said, uh, you, know, you know, grace is something to be grateful for. But if you think you have it all the time, you won't be grateful for it anymore. So remember... Remember the things that we're grateful for. You've got to start hungering for the forgiveness of God. Thank you, God, for your forgiveness. I'm grateful for your forgiveness. I walked into my bathroom in my office today, and I've got a picture. It's been hanging in that office for, my gosh, four years, however many years we've been over in this specific building. But it says, gratitude causes you to be thankful for what you already have. What you already have. We've got a hunger. We've got a thirst for God again. You want something in your life? You've got a hunger for it. You've got a thirst. You've got to get thirsty. How many of you are hungry? How many of you are thirsty this morning? How many of you are ready for an encounter with God? I'm not talking about just to get into his presence. I'm talking about to get right smack dab in the middle of the glory of God so that his presence can get on the inside of you. 
I mean, that's what we have to be thinking about, right? So I'm going to give you a couple things uh, uh, just to remember as, as you position yourself for the remainder of this month and hopefully for the remainder of your life. Because if I were you and if I was, especially if I was a baby Christian, and that's not a knock against anybody. There's a lot of people that are just, they hadn't been a Christian for a long time. They don't know what somebody may know that's been in it for 10, 15, 20 years, right? But if I were you, I'd be asking a question. How do I position myself for divine encounters with God? How do I do that? Can you just give me a few things practically that will help me to, to position my life so that I can encounter God the way that you're saying I should encounter God. Let me give you a, a, maybe three or four, maybe three. I'm not really for sure. But let's go through this one. Stay humble. There's your one. Stay humble. Acknowledge the power of God in your life, but also acknowledge the need for God in your life. You know why I think Jesus exits a lot of people who become religious? Because they don't need Jesus anymore. They have it all together. I don't, I don't I, I'm fine. I mean, I know how to pray. I know how to do my Bible study. I know how to show up to church. I know how to turn on TBN and watch Joyce Meyer. I know how to do all that. No, you got you to stay humble. You got to stay humble. You got to stay low. He says he exalts those who humble themselves. But the proud, the people who exalt themselves, you know what God's word says? He actually brings them low. I hope I never get to a point to where God has to bring me low. I pray that at any moment in my life, God can look at my life and say, that boy right there has stayed humble. I'm going to elevate him in the spirit. Right? So just stay humble. Uh, what about this one? Stay devoted to God and fear God. Stay devoted to him. You know, I find myself at times, I'll use myself as an example, but the other day I was sitting on the couch. It was actually yesterday. I was sitting on the couch, so the other day was yesterday, right? But this is what I mean when I say stay devoted to God and fear God. There was a moment in my life, and this is, this is my convictions, not yours. I'm not preaching my convictions on you and making you feel bad. But there was a moment in my life, and it's still there. I just had to check myself yesterday. There was a moment in my life that if, uh, if I was watching a movie or something, I hate movies because they, you can't even watch a good movie anymore these days. Thank God for some of these Christian movies that are coming out that are actually good. Come on, anybody else think that Christian movies sometimes are just poorly done? And it's like, gosh, it's painful to even watch this. The world is beating us. What are we doing? Well, now we've got Christian movies that's coming out that's beating the world. Come on, somebody. Somebody picked up on it. But I found myself yesterday just watching a movie and it said a few cuss words to where it used to. If it said a cuss word, I'm out, man. I don't care. That movie is not more important than my relationship with God. Does that mean that I'm way deep and going to hell if I listen to or watch a movie that says a cuss word? Well, no, I don't know if you'd go to hell, but I just think that we have to stay devoted to God and we got to fear God. And there was a smidgen, just a piece of the fear of God that I had in my life that I found out yesterday I've got to rebuild because I didn't turn it off after the first one. Now, if it says GD, I'm out. I don't care. I'll leave a $50 movie. I don't care, and I'll beg for my money back at the other thing. I mean, that's just where I'm at. I still hold that conviction, but I thought, my gosh, I don't fear God the way that I used to fear God because I wanted to come to Him as pure and as holy as I could be. I'm not perfect, right? Not perfect, but I want to do that. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 2, go back and read it. It's about a man by the name of Cornelius. He was a devout man and, and someone who feared God, the Bible says, right? And because he was a devout man and someone who feared God, the Bible literally paints in Acts chapter 10 an encounter that he had with God. You know what he was doing when he had the encounter with God? Do you know? Did, he wasn't in a church service. He wasn't crying out to God saying, God, I need an encounter with you. I need you now. I need you to show up. No, he was just keeping his usual appointment with God. He was praying one afternoon about three o'clock and God showed up. Why? Because he just stayed devoted and he feared God. You know, when you stay devoted and you fear God, God shows up, man, at, at 1045 at night when you're, when you're struggling to read through your Bible. 
Come on. If you stay faithful and you're devoted to God or devoted and, and stay in fear of God and knowing He is a sovereign, holy God, man, God's going to have some divine interventions in your life that shows up in moments that you never thought He would show up. Amen? Last, I'd probably tell you to just stay faithful. Look at your neighbor right now and say, stay faithful. Stay faithful, stay faithful, stay faithful, stay faithful. You, you can't be tossed to and fro all the time. This is another issue that we see in the church. Something don't work out, I'm gone. I'm gone, this one's gone, that one's gone. Nobody's wanting to be faithful to God anymore. We're more faithful to our emotions than we are to God. God don't want us to be tossed to and fro all of the time in everything that we hear, right? It, it, you got to be faithful in the good times. It's not that hard to be faithful in the good times. I don't know about you, but man, I tell you, when I'm on cloud nine, hallelujah. You know what? It's, it's not hard. I'll tell you this. It's not hard in the good times to keep showing up to church, but it is hard in the good times to keep reading your Bible. <laughs> Isn't it true? Isn't it true? And then, and then we experience bad times. We're trying to figure out why do I always experience bad times? Because God's like, I get closer to you in bad times. And if you would be close to me in, in, in the good times as you are the bad times, I'd probably quit allowing a few things to happen in your life. Right? We see it in Exodus chapter 3. Let's, let's just talk about these normal things that happen, these encounters that happen on a daily basis. In Exodus chapter 3, Moses had an encounter with God. Y'all remember that? Y'all know what he was doing? Y'all remember? I mean, he, he went out into the desert that day to have an encounter with God, right? I mean, he was praying to God. He was seeking God's face. He just showed up in the middle of the desert and said, God, I want you to just show up in a miraculous way. I'm looking for a burning bush, God. I'm looking for some supernatural thing that'll be a sign to me. No, that's not what he did. Moses had a divine encounter with God. It was the burning bush moment. You know what he was doing? He was tending his father-in-law's sheep. He was being faithful. That's it. He wasn't positioning himself. He had already positioned himself. Do you get what I'm trying to do today? You get, get where I'm pointing you? I'm trying to show you you have to position yourself at all times for God to bring an encounter into your life and for you to experience the glory of God. You can't, you can't just position yourself when you're in a bad time at church in an altar moment and expect God to move on your behalf right then. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. But he was faithful. He was faithful with what was another man's. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all say, man, in the day. Yeah. He was faithful. He was tending to his father-in-law's sheep when God spoke to him and said, I choose you to be the deliverer of Israel out of Egypt. My goodness gracious. That's why our relationship with God, it can never become conditional. It's a conditional relationship. Well, if the weather's right, I'll come out to play. You see it in church. I mean, we, we always prepare to be down. I mean, we could be down two to 300 people on a weekend if it's raining outside. Fair weather Christians, love them. I love them with all my heart. But I think spiritually and even in our personal lives, we're the same way. If it's raining a little bit, we don't want to come out to play. Why? Because we're, we're, we're soaking our own tears up. We're having our pity party. We're going through what we're going through. Because I, I can't come out and play right now because it's not good. It's, it's not the weather to come out and play. Sun's not shining. <laughs> right? Let's go back to James chapter 4, verse 8. Right now, here we go, James 4, 8. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Isn't that what it says? Purify your hearts, you double-minded. James, I think it was in chapter 1 of the book of James. You can fact-check me if you want, but you can go back and read the whole book. It's a very easy read, and a great read, by the way. But James 1 says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. 
looking for that stability in my life. Pastor, I'm trying my best to position, you know, everything. And all. I'm trying my best. I, I get it. But, but you can't be double-minded. You can't have a double standard. You, 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 can't, you can't try to position yourself for the things of God while living over here in the world. You can't do that. Leave that scripture up. That's why he's saying draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. You've got to take a step to God today. Some of you, you have to, I'm, I'm talking about people who are going to heaven today and people, maybe you're in here and you don't know if you would go to heaven today, but I'm talking about taking a step towards God. You've got to draw near to God. The, the closer you get to God, the closer he is to you. He is not going to force himself on you. That's what a lot of people think. No, he's not, he's not a forceful God. He's a perfect gentleman. He's not going to come and just jump on your life and say, hey, 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 you're going to serve me today. I tell you what. No, 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 that's not it. But as soon as you take a step, he's taking a step. When the prodigal son turned and he took the step, he came to his senses. When he came to his senses and he took the step to go back to the father, what did the father do? The father ran to him. It's a perfect example of someone who is far from God, needs God. They come to their senses. They repent. They turn. And as soon as they turn, God's not just sitting back there going, yeah, I'm going to let you walk those four miles because you shouldn't have done what you did. Now, that may have been your earthly father, but that's not your heavenly father. Your heavenly father is totally different. Amen? So my encouragement to you today is to position yourselves this week. Begin to, as you pray, these, these uh, prayer points that we have that you're going to see through social media this week, and you begin to pray and you begin to seek for the next 21 days, I pray that you will experience and encounter God in ways that you've never encountered Him before. Let me pray with you. Father, today I just I come before you knowing that without you we can't do anything. And Father, if there's anything that we need, we need an encounter with you. Oh, it's not just about getting into your presence and feeling a tingle and leaving and never experiencing the power. Would you allow your presence to get into us? That's the key. That's the change agent. You are, Holy Ghost, the change agent. Move on the inside of us today. Every believer in this room, fire them up. Encourage them. Bring revival into their life. If there is, there, there's just you know, uh, some, some coals that are just got some smoke coming off of them spiritually and, and they're not really burning like they used to burn, I pray that you blow on them today. Set a fire on the inside of them. But if there's anybody in this room and you need to come to the knowledge of Christ, Jesus is knocking today at your heart's door. He wants to come in. He wants to radically change your life. Draw near to God and He'll draw near to you. Some of you, you just need to come a little closer to God today. You need to reject, just like that prodigal son rejected that life that he was living and he made that pivot and he turned back toward a loving God. Some of you, you need to make the pivot and you need to turn back towards a loving God. If that's you today and you need to make that pivot, raise your hand. Come on. No, nobody's ashamed in this place. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Pastor, I need a change in my life. I need things to shift. I need things. Thank you right there. I see you. There's several hands that are going up. I need a shift. I am done with this. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, today I pivot. I turn from my wicked ways. I'm seeking your face. I'm drawing nearer to you. Forgive me of my sins. Become my Lord. Help me from this moment on to position myself in such a way that you live in me and that I experience the glory of God. I pray encounters in my life with Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.